Welcome to the Spinner Rack with your hosts, Brian and Junior. Welcome back. Issue 42 of the Spinner Rack. I'm your host, Baby Brian Amps. Joining us, Junior Ruiz, co-host of Breaking the Fourth Wall. And this week, we're just going to talk about comics. Okay. I mean, I really got... Usually, I sit down and I'm like, okay, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, but there's so much. Sometimes, there are just little tidbits of things that you can't compile onto an episode. Oh, yeah. So, this is just going to be all those comic book scraps collected together. Yeah. And we're going to talk shit. Like... I've heard the rumor that Marvel is going to... I already know where you're going with this. Yeah. Like Marvel's putting the Fantastic Four stuff on hiatus not to promote the movie. Exactly. Dude, what the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? <laughs> the f- you're going to fucking take the first family of comics off the shelf just because you don't want to promote a movie? Look at the movie, though. Damn. That's, that's, a, that's a fucking strong statement. That is a strong statement. What do you... Okay, okay, so you're Marvel as a comic. Okay, you're a Marvel comic company. You're putting your books on hiatus, your Fantastic Four books. You're still going to push the characters, though, but you're pushing them in other books instead. You know, you're pushing them in the Avenger books or whatever other books they're appearing in that month. You're not. You're putting their titles on hiatus because you don't want to help promote the movie. Is the, you think this is because they they're not happy with the direction of movies? I mean, that's the only thing I could think of. They are definitely not happy with the direction of well, movies going in. But since they don't have really control over it. They can't say anything. Wasn't there a point though that Fox was gonna that Fox was saying we're just gonna let this revert back to Marvel, and then they just said fuck it, we're gonna make a movie. Yeah, because they realized that they want they could still make money from it. They wanted to reboot it. They weren't sure. Marvel's like give it back, and they saw how how successful the Marvel stuff was going at the time. So Fox was like, you know what? No, we're gonna keep on to it. There's still life in this. You know, so Marvel's like, okay. Well, then give us this back and give us that back. You know, and we won't bust your ass. Because they were running out of... Uh, I believe... One of the, I know for Daredevil, they were running out of time. And they just let that expire. Marvel took Daredevil back, thank God. So now Marvel owns everything, minus the X franchise, and minus... Uh, well, X and Fantastic Four, and then uh, Spider-Man. Which I, I, I do like the fact that Marvel and Sony actually have a good relationship. I was just... You just took the words right out of my fucking brain. That's what Fox needs to fucking like, do. Like, I feel like... I almost feel like there's such a good relationship with Mar- with Marvel, Disney, and Fox. Sony. I mean Sony. I don't know why I said Fox, but Sony. That you could, we could possibly see Spider-Man in an Avengers movie. Here's what I don't understand. Sony and Fox can step back and see how much bank Marvel is making with these movies. Why not co-promote, co-brand? Right. You know, Disney, Disney Marvel slash Sony present. Bam. You know, what? right there. Why the fuck not? You know how much money that's going to make? Seriously. Oh my god. It's greed. That's the whole problem with the fucking this is world. Where Everybody's you greed. put in the Futurama picture. It's like, shut up and take my money. Yeah, right? You know what I'm talking yeah. about? That meme that you Absolutely. always see? A fry? Yup, I couldn't think of his name. I wanted to call him Grease version of Homer Simpson. No, when I heard that dude, I was like, damn, Marvel, that's ballsy. That but is. That is very ballsy. I, I get it, man. I get it, but I, I can't believe they're going to do it to the first family of comics. You know, but I, the only reason I can think of, like I said, that they're doing it is because they're not happy with the direction the studio's taking them. Well, they are Do taking you know, it in a horrible direction, and we've talked about this before. Have you spoken to, whether in person or online, anybody who's excited to watch this new Fantastic no. Four movie? Not a single fucking person. No. Everybody who comes into the shop is like, dude, I'm not in a hurry to watch that. I will not watch that. I personally don't know if I'm going to watch it. I mean, I will, eventually. I don't know if I'm going to rush to the theater and see it. Like when it comes on TV and it just happens, you're like, oh, I'll check this out for about 30 seconds. I don't know. Unless it really sucks. It could be Catwoman, you know, which I've never seen. I've actually watched more it. More than like a glimpse of. I've watched it. Oh, no. no, no, no. It was Catwoman in name only. Well, yeah, I know. It's, they totally changed everything else. I didn't want nothing to do with that piece of shit. Or Electra. But I tried to watch Electra. You know what? The director's cut to a lecture wasn't as bad. Yeah, see, and and, the same thing with and that's what people said about Daredevil, but I don't think it made it any different. Da- I think Daredevil still was just Daredevil. It was all right. It's, I'm excited for the Netflix is. stuff, though. Yeah, I'm not particularly a fan of Daredevil. Kind of fucked that character. Yeah, yeah. I always liked Daredevil. So speaking of which, like, I'm one gonna, of the only Marvel books I still keep up with. Here's here's another stupid thing, but like, uh, if anyone's listening to this show, they'll they'll know all what three I'm talking of you. about. Yeah. Oh. Hey, Lewis, thanks. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> so, but for the people that actually listen, 
Dennis Barger and his weird little war with Mark Wade. I fucking love Dennis. Dennis is a personal friend of mine. Yeah, no, I know that. I know. Dennis has been on the show. He was awesome. I love Dennis. But, like, is, is Mark Wade, like, really a dick, or is this just some kind of weird, hokey, like, busting each other balls kind of you thing? You know what? Um, I'm just going to go ahead and kill this conversation real quick. All I'm going to say is we need to have Dennis on the show to, again to talk about this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we're going to leave it at that. Okay. We'll talk to you more about it later. Right on. So, Mark Wade, I'm going to move on. I'm going to keep with Wade, though. Getting pulled from Hulk. What the hell's up with that? Is he getting pulled from it, or is he deciding to leave? I, I don't know. All I know is that I was reading The Indestructible Hulk, and it was good for a while. I started it. I stopped right around the... Uh, and then when it became a Hulk agent of time or whatever. That's right around... I, I just I fell behind, not on purpose. Yeah. But I stopped reading it, like, yeah, that, that story arc where Walt Simonson came back for the artwork, mm-hmm. and they went in the past, and he was h- hanging out with Thor in the Antarctic or whatever. I was like, eh. Yeah. I'm not a fan of Walt Simonson's art. I mean, I, I, I'm a fan of him for what he's done. Man, his Thor stuff is awesome. His Better A is pretty good. Like, that, that Better A stuff. That, yeah, that's that's my favorite Thor run. But you know what? Excuse me. I'll go one step further and take it to the point where it's like, Remember the conversation? I don't remember if it was if we recorded it or if it was just a conversation you and I had separate, but how we were speaking of artists and how when they first come on the scene, usually they find their niche, but then they find it and it's awesome. But right. then a few years later, they say they're growing as an artist and in, in retrospect, their artwork fucking sucks. I think that's what happened to Simonson, in my opinion. When he was doing the Better Ray Bill shit uh-huh. back in the 80s, Dude, that stuff was phenomenal. But if you look at his artwork now, it's way too sketchy for me. It's way, it's too, it's too animated for its own good. You know, like, and when I keep saying that, see, the image I have in my head is that cover of Indestructible Hulk where he's crouched down and he's trying to pick up the hammer. It's just so much going on in that cover. I'm just gonna have to pull it out and look at it. I know what you're talking about, but I have to look at it. You know, that's the thing. That's why I hate when I write my reviews. Like, and this is why I'm glad that comics we hear comics remix and the Spinner Rack, we're fans. We're not trying to be, like, some corporate entity that talks about... Like, we're fans talking about what we're passionate about. Like, today I might love Mark Wade, tomorrow I might hate yeah. him. And then the next day I might love him again. Like, and in no way I'm, like, I a professional writer. Yeah, I'm So not... I'm just a fan reviewing comics when I write my reviews. Yeah, that's it's what I write, what I thought. What can I say? Some of these pa- these, these books are just hard to be passionate about reading. You know what, I guess I agree, because like I told you earlier, um, there's books that I would love to sit back and be like, dude, I need to catch up on this. There's, okay, I have th- three three separate piles. My pile of, I need to hurry up and catch up with this book. I am currently caught up with this book. Why the fuck am I still buying this book? You know? Like, I, could, I buy it, but I can give a shit if right. I'm caught up. Yeah, on and it. The, why the fuck is it you were buying books that we don't give a fuck about? You're just like, uh... I, see, here's my like thing. It's like out of habit. That, and I'm a fan of the character. Great instance, Catwoman and Green Arrow. And No Cities writing. It's no secret, I do not like Anne Nocetti as a writer. Now, I still bought the Green Arrow stuff. I still bought... I, st- I haven't bought the Catwoman stuff in a while. That's another one I need to catch up on. But I'll go back and buy it. Because I am a fan of Green Arrow and right. Catwoman. You know, regardless... It's like, okay, they're overall... I look at the character from their inception to where they're currently at. And I look at it like a timeline. Okay, you know, like if they were real people, I'd be like, okay, this is when I first met them in their life. I want to know everything. Or like my life personally. You know, my life, I go through ups and downs. I do go through boring parts. Right, right. I go through exciting parts, you know. That's how I look at it with the writers. It's like, okay, it's this, it's a funk. It's going through this. It's going through that. But at the same time, it's the character, you know. I, I was doing that with Batman and Detective. Even when I wasn't liking it, I was still buying it. See, I haven't been reading any Batman books. The last book I read was Batman, one of these damn zero-year tie-ins or whatever. And it kind of lost my interest. In my opinion, I, like Scott Snyder's writing on Batman after... The owl stuff, because death of the family was it started off so fucking great. The ending sucked so hard that it, like at that point I was like Scott Snyder, you lost me. And when I read a character, I I, I, I get a feel for okay that's a character because you've been reading these characters for years. So like with Joker, I always heard Mark Hamill's voice. You know I've always seen the ad like I could just see it. Even after when Dark Knight Return or when it came out, <laughs> kind of like now when I read Bane, I hear dude, Tom Hardy. Yeah, I hear Tom Hardy. Yeah, you know shit like that. And then when Dark Knight came out, I could do either Mark Hamill or I could do uh, Heath Ledger. Right, right. But when you, you just get a feeling, okay, that's Joker, that's Joker, that's Joker. But when Scott Snyder took over and he started writing the Joker in that Death of the Family story arc, 
Dude, I did not feel like that was Joker. I kept okay. waiting for the reveal that that was an imposter. Let's not like totally slam Scott Snyder here. Oh, well, I'm not because but, he wrote Severed, and I fucking love but, Severed. But his Batman was awesome pre New Fifty Two. That's right. It Snyder's, was Black Snyder's detective run was fucking phenomenal. Well, no, no. See, I said all the way up through Court of Owls, and then he came into New Fifty Two, and his New Fifty Two for me has just gotten it started off great, weaker and weaker and weaker. Right, that's what I said. It started with, well, to me with New Fifty Two. Yeah, Court of Owls was great. Death of the Family, meh. Court of Owls was alright. And then Death fucking... Death of the Family was totally... Eh. The end just killed it for me. Once and I saw that end, and then, like I said, it didn't feel like the Joker, I was lost on it. fucking this Year Zero stuff is... Whatever. Yeah. For the birds. I, I stopped... I mean, I still read it, but... I haven't. It's, I, I, like, it's been like two issues. Two, three issues. It sucks. Read. Honestly, I read the first issue of Batman Eternal. I was just gonna ask you. First Batman comic book I've got excited about reading in a while. It was, it was good. Are you caught up on Batman Eternal? Uh, fuck no. No? no, yeah, the first I'm, issue was the only one I read. I'm so behind, dude. I'm like, right, like, I'm actually looking forward to reading it. I'm excited to read some Batman Eternal. I'm not excited to read the Bionic Man, but uh, no, I haven't, I haven't caught up on the Eternal. I want to though. Okay, I'm caught up on everything else. Yeah, I read. Uh, what do you think of the new Sin. direct? Okay, ba- before I get to this. Oh, you know what? I realized. No, 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 no. You wait, 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 hold let's on, go hold to on. Original Sin. Hold on. Mark Wade. This is I started this fucking oh, ten minutes ago. Yeah, Mark Wade and we never came back to it. <laughs> I started hating that book, Indestructible Hulk. Mm-hmm. I wasn't excited about him doing the new run. And then I read the first issue. And I don't know if you've read the first issue. No. Spoiler alert, Bruce Banner is fucking brain dead. Okay. Someone Wait, shot him through the right. head and his brain like he turned into the Hulk with his head open and his brain hanging out, so his brain matter just got like scattered. Wow. So when he turned back into Bruce Banner He's pretty much a retard. Wow. No offense to those people. You know, I, I'm not saying he's... Well, I read, like, the solicit for issue he's four like, or five or whatever. Yeah. And they said that Bruce Banner is no longer the Hulk. Who is... And there's a new Hulk. Well, that's the thing. Greg Pak's taking over again, I think. Yeah. That's the writer and way it's going. And right. it really sucks because I was all prepared to hate this. And I think that's the most interesting thing I've ever seen with the Hulk. Nice. That's as interesting for me as Planet Hulk was. Like, I'm a big Hulk fan. And I felt like Hulk's been a really underused and poorly dealt with character for many years. Okay. There are very few storylines for me with Hulk that I thought were good. Uh, when he goes in the future and sees himself as the maestro, yeah. that was a great storyline. That's classic. Uh, I, I loved all the uh, the Mixer Fix, Mr. Fix-It, the gangster Hulk. Yeah. Loved that stuff. It was all classic shit. Um, That's when Peter David was writing on Yeah. And then Planet Hulk for me was awesome. Yeah, I thought Planet Hulk was probably the best Hulk storyline in the past like 20 years. And then World War Hulk sucked. They built all this awesome momentum up, and World War Hulk just ate the dick. So, I know you're a big Walking Dead fan, dude. Anyway, yeah. So, let me talk to you about this. What did you think of this 12-part uh, epic that just concluded? What the fuck was it called? Um, no Way Out? No, no, was that it? No, No Way Out was before it, I think. What, what the, the hell was it called? Well, this epic we suck. part we saga suck. that just finished. We suck. With, with we're, we're terrible and... comic book fans. We don't even know it was All what? Out War. All Out War. Yes, it all was. All Out War. Okay, so what did you think of All Out War? I know once I started degrading myself, I would remember the name of it. Gotcha. All Out War. Um, yeah, you know. Okay. Yeah. I thought it... Uh, I, I really think Walking Dead's kind of done, man. Yeah. I really feel like that comic's on its last legs. I thought about it the same thing I, bought, I thought about the death of the family. Yeah. Great build up, you know, but then at the end it just got weak. He's just like, no, I'm gonna let you live. Yeah, I was, I was fucking like, really? Yeah, really. See, my thing with Walking Dead, and we've discussed this before. It's like I get it; it's a story of survival, but it's like every story arc is the same. You know, hey, meet a few new people, equals new villain, fight for survival, move on, rinse, wash, repeat. Same yeah, shit. no, totally. Did you read the latest one? What is it? One. Well, I think 128 will be out by the time this airs, but 127, the deluxe one, with the way they introduced the new cast, and I think it's uh, a year or so after All Out War. No, I haven't read that yet. You haven't read that one yet? No, yeah, yeah. That was a good one. I'm behind. It sets it up. It's a year, I believe it's a year or two later. I know quite a bit of time has passed. Um, now, the Hilltop is its own community where Maggie runs, and Rick now runs Alexandria, which is the community he lives in. Rick's got this scruffy beer shaved head and he's got uh, instead of the nub he's still got the nub but every morning he wakes up and he's got like uh, a prosthetic hook to help him as a hand so Rick has now come into the fact that he's accepted the leader role and he's like yes I am the leader of these people he's like super cool uh, Carl's grown you know he's two years older now 
he wants to go to work at the hilltop in this sawmill or something like that. He refers to Andrea as mom. You know, cause they, I guess, you know, she obviously helped raise him and stuff. Right. So things are a little bit different. Um, Jesus is now dressed as like a samurai. And yes, his name is Jesus, not Jesus. Um, he dresses like a fucking ronin samurai. He's got the armor and everything's pretty cool. Um, there's a lot of secrets because you see throughout the issue, you know, like, uh, Andrea looks at uh, Sophia. Not Sophia, what the fuck her name is. Uh, the Spanish chick, Rosita. Huh. And she's like, hey, did you talk to Eugene yet? She's like, no, not yet. We haven't had a moment to speak. She's like, well, you need to got, you, you need to take care of that situation. But you don't know what it is. And there's a lot of that going on. You're like, oh, you know, this and this and this. But you're like, what? Just fucking tell me, you right. know? So it, it basically shows you, okay, here's the new, new, uh, new fresh faces who are joining Rick's camp, what Rick has been up to, and who's still around doing what. It's like I said, it's a deluxe size issue. At the end of the issue, Carl's speaking to somebody. He's walking down the stairs. He's got a candle lit, and he's talking about some chick who lives a few doors down, who showed him and a couple of the other boys her boobs. And he, he used to like her, but now that she, he's seen her boobs, he's not sure how he feels <laughs> because it's like she. He thought she was more of a classy lady kind of thing. That's awesome. So you hear the voice like, "Well, how does that make you feel?" And blah blah blah. So at the very last page, you see. He's in the basement of the house that they live in, and there's a jail cell in the basement. He's got Negan in the jail cell, and he's taught. He's been talking, and Carl has been talking to Negan for like the last year, or however much, and just because he needs somebody to talk to. And Negan has lost weight. He's got long hair and stuff. And at the very last thing, Negan goes, "Can I ask?" He's like, "You know, I appreciate you coming down here to talk to me and blah blah blah." And Carl's like, "Yeah, it's cool. You know, I have somebody to talk to. Like they're friends, you know." So then he goes, can I ask you a question? And Carl goes, yeah, what? And he goes, do you still want to kill me? And Carl looks at him, he's like, every fucking day or something like that. He's like, yeah. He just tells, basically reassures him, yes, I, if I have a chance, I'm still killing you. And that's how the issue ends. What the fuck, dude? Yeah. Spoiler alert. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. That's, you yeah, no, have you been reading his Invincible? No. His Invincible's but, fucking nuts, too. Um, dude, you know, I haven't read that fucking book since, like, Issue six. Oh my god! But but I do have every issue minus issue four. People out there, if you guys got a copy of Invincible number forty nine that you really don't need or you want to sell it to me for like less than five bucks, I'll gladly take it off your hands. Forty nine is the only issue I need up to from one through one hundred, and I think I have up to like one hundred three or something. But then there's a small gap, and then issue one hundred was it one hundred nine or one ten where uh, Invincible gets raped. And I was like, I must buy this issue. So I bought it, and I actually read that full issue. You didn't read it. You're looking at me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. I, See, you, it, thought, you said rape, and I immediately thought prison sex. And then I was like, <laughs> I don't remember him getting butt raped by anybody. You, yeah, it's funny, but because then that's I remember, the same thing I thought when you're like, Invincible gets raped. I'm like, he's getting ass fucked? Yeah. <laughs> but then it's like, it's the superhero oh. chick that decides to ride him against his will. We are such, we are so fucking too stereotypical fucking old heterosexual dudes. Whatever. He gets butt raped? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that, yeah, that chick, she's like, I'm making babies with you, motherfucker. Yeah. Urgh. She's like, you know you want it. You're going like, like no. it. He's like, I don't want it. She's like, really? Because I'm, I could feel different or something that's, like that. That's hot shit right there. Yeah. Well, you do. There's a, a, a chick, a hot chick trying to ride you. Mentally, you may, you're may you like, no, you know, I don't want to do this. I don't get off me. Get off me. But your body has, is its own language, you know? <laughs> Obviously, David Gorder doesn't read comic books. Oh, dear God, don't because get into he that would, shit. he would know that She-Hulk doesn't run around fucking people. It's crazy fucking bitches and invincible. <laughs> It's not true. Dude, did you read... Did, you, I don't know if you've read... Back in the like 90s, around the Onslaught time, mm -hmm. remember how Juggernaut was a member of the X-Men after Onslaught? Yeah. Okay, there was an issue in Uncanny X-Men where She-Hulk and Juggernaut are laying in the bed and they're talking about how great they just had sex and all this shit. So I remember it was a, later on, Spider-Man was around and he's like, really, Juggernaut? How did that feel? She's like, I bet you're not the same. He's like, I bet you're not the same. Basically saying, bitch, he broke your walls. You're not tight anymore. I, you, there's no way in hell you're Jesus. still tight. Dude, it was the funniest fucking comic I read. Because oh. it was so much innuendo in there, you know? Just basically suggesting how much of a slut she is. It's like, you just slept with Juggernaut. There's no fucking way in hell you're not sore. 
<laughs> That's a terrible joke to make in a comic book. You know, but I was just like, wow. It is what it is. I think that was Joe Montreal. Who's that? Who's that writer? I think he is Mark Miller. Malar. Malar. I'm sorry. Malar. Um, yeah, when he said that stuff, I was like, obviously he was trying to make a really bad joke. Yeah. And he doesn't know superheroes. But then I was kind of annoyed that this is the dude that's supposed to be making the or driving one. us to a Justice League movie, and he doesn't know dick about Martian Manhunter. Yeah. He's like just going to slam on Martian Manhunter like that. Offended, dude. The Manhunter's the shit. Man what did they tell you about Warner Brothers? They suck, obviously. You know what I also think is funny? He just talked all this shit about a big green woman, right? Uh-huh. And She-Hulk. Have you seen the cover of Superman 31? Superman 31? Yeah, it just came out this week. No, I don't think so. Well, is that continued? two, three weeks back, according to this podcast, um, Superman's on the cover fighting a hulked-out green Lois Lane. Oh, yeah, she's like... Possessed by Brainiac or something. Some shit, shit like, like that. that. Yeah, that's like, part of way the, to go. You got you got the guy spearheading yeah, your cinematic right? universe talking shit about a big green woman, but you're gonna go ahead and put one on your Superman comic. Kudos to you, Warner Brothers Obviously, in DC. Obviously, there is a disconnect between the comics. Oh, do you think? And the movies. Sometimes I wonder, dude, if they're not purposely trying to run DC comics into the ground for Disney just to scoop up and buy, which frightens me at the same time. But also, I wonder, if Marvel got its hands on Batman, would it be awesome? I don't know. And you know how you can compare that? Would you want them intermingling these heroes? I don't think so, because Batman has such a rich history. That's not to say you can compare it to the Star Wars thing that's going on. You know, at the end of the year, Dark Horse loses right, the right. license, Marvel gets it back. Now, did you hear what Marvel was doing? This is kind of old news, but Marvel is totally wiping Dark Horse continuity. Yeah. So, the expanded universe does not exist. So, you get 20 some, tw- a little over 20 years worth of Star Wars stuff that now... It doesn't matter. Does not matter. And this is like the only company that's ever really done mo- uh, Star Wars. Not including the early Star Wars Marvel shit. Right, right. You know, because that was something yeah. totally different. But, okay, so now you got all this continuity going away. Everything you know about Star Wars pretty much besides the movies is now non-existent. So that's like saying Marvel taking Batman and wiping away everything you know. Right. Let's start fresh. There's no way in fuck you can forget everything they can. No. That'd no be a way. Horrible thing. You know? That'd be a horrible thing. At this point, the man, only way <coughs> Disney owning DC could could function properly is if they keep it its own separate entity. Okay, we own you continue to do what you do, we're not going to interfere. We just own you. That's it. You know? And then you might see a Marvel Comics ad for a new issue of Spider-Man in the new issue of fucking Justice League or something. Right. But once you start... Captain America is now the leader of the Justice League and Superman is now an Avenger. I'm done. Yeah, totally. No fucking way. It's well, okay to like, own it. Keep them separate. That's like how... Back to that Fantastic Four thing and how they're taking the book away and now they're interfering. In I fucking really hate how... I feel like Marvel... Like, people talk about how one apes the other and all they... Those motherfuckers ape each other all the time. DC does shit fucking five years ago, then Marvel does the shit today. So they back and forth are doing shit that are comparable. I mean, people are saying that the Grayson thing kind of... The winner, it's Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier. That's exactly what the fuck it is. Do you feel that way? I agree 100% yeah? with that. Dude, okay. Winter Soldier, what happened? He was Captain America. He died, quote-unquote, and only a handful of people knew he was still alive. Batman, Fury, and Widow were the only three people he was, knew that he was still alive. Batman. I'm sorry, fucking Captain America. <laughs> Dude, he's fucking Batman. He knows everything. Batman, the shit. Batman, Fury, and Black Widow. Oh my god, how fucking different would that movie have been if it was Batman, the Winter Soldier? You know, just take that motherfucker out, put Christian Bale in. But no, dude, ba- he's Batman. He knows everything. But no, seriously, Captain America, Nick Fury, and Widow were the only three people who knew he was still alive. From being the glorified hero he was to going into doing covert missions, everybody thinks he's dead. The exact same thing's happening with Grayson. Okay. There's only a handful of people who know he's still alive. I'm gonna. He's going into hiding. I'm gonna shut you off right there because I don't want to talk about that right now. Okay. Because. Uh, I, guess, I guess we're talking about it next week. We're gonna talk about that next week. All right. We're gonna talk forever evil. Maybe touch on a little bit of Future Send. Okay. 
I did believe you were saying something about Original Sin, though. Let's just knock Original Sin out real quick because it just started. Because you said you were like you didn't yeah, like I, Original Sin or something so far? No. Yeah. I'm a fan of mysteries. I like whodunits. You know? Well, but, yeah, that's cool, but I, I just, for, I don't know, for some reason... It's a little bit more gruesome than I what mean, they I, do, you know? Oh, he's not just dead. They fucking took his eyes. It's it's not terrible or anything. Like, Well, here's the thing. It just started. What's my what's my thing? Give it toward you know. You really I just can't. feel like that first issue really like is a slap in the face to people that actually read Nova. Yeah. Because okay. I feel like if you're buying that book, you're you've got to kind of you have to be reading Nova. Kind of. I feel like if you're a fucking Marvel fan today and you're not reading Nova, like you're probably like not reading one of their best books. I'm not reading one of their best books. You should read it. It's good. I'm so behind, dude. Dude, Superior Spider Man, Thor. Uh, all new X Men, Nova. All new X Men. I'm behind. Those are my favorite well. books. I'm behind on a lot of titles. First issue really of Cyclops was on. awesome. Was it? Loved it. See, I don't want to read that until I catch up with all new X Men. Right. On. Does it matter? Not really, because at some point, like after some shit goes down, Scott's just like young. Scott's like, "Fuck this, dude." Like after the trial of Jean Grey stuff ends. See, I didn't read any of that. Okay, when that stuff ends. Oh, that's a nice little crossover with Guardians right, of the Galaxy. Right, right. I mean, I stocked the shit. I know um, what it is. When, <laughs> when that shit happens and they're gonna go back to Earth, he's like, "I'm just gonna fucking chill here with my dad." Okay. So it's really just about him and... Of course like, the first, right. the first was just him being around, the, him and the Star Jammers, and then they take off together on a ship, so it's like... Okay, here's the thing. Totally uh, kind of unrelated. Father and son in space adventure. Kind of unrelated, really quick, though. Okay, Guardians of the Galaxy opens in a few months. Marvel and Disney is pushing this to be their next big thing, you know, fucking event. Guardians of the uh, Galaxy. Book bags, bed sheets... Fucking socks, swimming trunks, you name it, it's going to be out there. Rocket, Rocket Raccoon, Raccoon plush. plush. Exactly. Okay, so, let's say that does great. How long before Fox goes, we're going to do a Star Jammers movie? Yeah, no, totally. Totally. You know? Can you see I that? feel like that's what Marvel's doing, They're with testing the wires with doing an Inhumans book. They're trying oh, to yeah. see, hmm, can we make Inhumans the new mutants? Oh, of course. So we that's can exactly just cinematically is. have our own mutants. And, that's exactly what it is. But that fucking just sucks, man. It just sucks. You know what, now you say Inhumans and New Mutants and all this shit, I've got to go back last week when we were talking about Days of Future Past, uh-huh. breakout character of the fucking movie who I totally did not expect, Quicksilver. Yeah, yeah for real. Or excuse me, Peter. Okay, you know what, that's something I meant to get to when we talked about that last week, so I'll just drop it right now, with the inconsistencies and, and the bitches people had walking that movie, the, the look of the Sentinels, why they do this, Quicksilver's outfit looks gay, everything worked in that movie. It did. Quicksilver was awesome. I did like how they had the subtle hint where he's like, I was like, Amanda could control metal. He's like, reminds me, uh, my mom used to know yeah, somebody totally. could do that. Yeah, totally. That was like, great The not yeah. and possibly me and his father. Yeah. Which are easy. We yeah. all know it is. That was good stuff, but... Uh, Did you watch Godzilla? Kind of off no. topic, No. Uh, it was my... For Mother's Day and my dad's birthday, it was right after. I told my parents, I'd take him out, we'd go see Godzilla. And then, like, oh, look, we have three schedules, we have three schedules. I haven't seen it yet. Mm. I'm taking the folks. No, no. Totally stream that movie. No, really? Yeah. Was it worth Matthew Broderick one from 1989? See, everybody goes on that. Well, Here's you my have take. To. No, 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 you can't. Here's my take on that. A lot of people forget that UPN had a Godzilla animated series in the 90s. No, I remember that. Okay, the Matthew Broderick Godzilla movie was spun out from the animated series. I think you got that backwards. No. I think the animated series was spun out from oh, the well, Matthew regardless, movie. Regardless, they connect to each other. Yeah. It's not the Godzilla that we all know. You got it's kind of like a pocket thing. You know, like all right, that's happened. It's on the side, whatever. The way we now look at okay. Origins. So you're trying to say that that Matthew Broderick Godzilla thing just is its own beast? And yeah, that's totally what it is. It's its own thing. Like the only well, relation it has to anything Godzilla is that animated well, series. Well, isn't that what this is? It's kind of like a soft relaunch. You know, I wouldn't say it's its own thing because it goes like it keeps in uh, tradition. I guess you would say what the older stuff that yeah. you know that you grew up on and shit. But dude, totally save your money. He doesn't. You don't fucking see him till like over almost an hour and a half in the movie. Well, that's terrible. Fucking Billy Crant. What, what a lot the fuck of Walter White. No, he dies within the first thirty minutes. What? Yes. Spoiler. Everybody fucking saw it by now. I didn't see it. Dude, fun fact. What's his name in Breaking Bad? Walter White. Walter White. Oh, uh, his real name though is uh. Brian Cranston. Brian Cranston. Did you know? Billy the Blue Ranger was actually named after him? Really? Billy Cranston. Billy Cranston. Wow. In uh, Power Rangers. Because he... What the fuck is his name again? Brian Cranston. Brian Cranston. Worked on Power Rangers back in the day. 
Yeah, I know. Apparently, he was one of the monsters. He was, he was one or two of the monsters, and he he did voices. That's awesome. That's awesome. Brian Cranston. Now you know. Should have been Lex Luthor. The, oh good God, yes. We could talk about that some other time, though. I'm gonna be starting that. So we're gonna get we're gonna roll into that piece of shit. Woo woo! This fast. is 42 comics and stuff. We just had to rant about random stuff. Could give you've it a upset me now. You've you've upset my mood. I have upset your you've mood. You've upset my mood. I've upset your mood. Way to go, bud. Yeah, I try. I try. Sure you do. <laughs> anyway, that's issue two. <laughs> issue 42 with Spinner Rack. I'm your host, Baby Brian House. My co-host, Gina Ruiz. As always, everything we do, comicsremix.com. Check it out. Go to the Facebook page. Like it. Comment on the post. Tell us we suck. Tell us Junior sucks. You can tell us those guys over at, at that other podcast suck. <laughs> you don't even remember the name of it? <laughs> Bogus. <laughs> The no, lockup. That, that's just no. I remember the name. You dick. It was just one of those. I'm slapping you in the faces, bitches. Podcasts are gonna go to war. We're gonna wrestle. Fuck your couch, nigga. There's gonna be a tag team belts, and we don't be the champions. That is such an unfair fight. It is an unfair fight. Have you not seen Tony and John? Well, they haven't. Huh? Well, they haven't. Dude, dear God. Yeah, it was. It's very one sided. Tony and John combined are me. Yeah, I know. That's wrong. Oh, my God. Anyway, that's been it. See you next week. Peace. <laughs>